Get on to rock, get up to burn, stand with the pride and burn for your desire. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Mid-Atlantic Mauling League. It is the final game here in the Chaos Cup, week number two, and it is a classic matchup tonight. It's going to be agility versus resilience. We have, yes, it's Donkey Teeth versus Dinabelle Darlings, Dead Fred versus Doug the Minotaur, Wood Elves versus Dwarves. Let's take a look at the standings before we get into the rosters. And I'm joined here tonight with my friend Artificial Bunny. How's it going, man? Cool. Why don't I turn your voice chat on there so people can hear you? <laughs> Perfect. I mean, you don't have to. I'll just be imaginary again. <laughs> I just talk to myself. It's fine. <laughs> Division A in the books. Artificial Bunny, that's you. Currently sitting in first place with the Poker Ratman. Followed very closely behind by El Nuburino's Masters of Mammal War Horseman with his win uh, last night. Took third place here after week two was over. The Baltimore Blitzers close behind in fourth place. McLeod's Maulers right behind them. The Dead Presidents and the Brewmeisters fought earlier today in the afternoon. They started off tied for sixth. They drew their game and so they're going to end the week tied for sixth with Cetra Skelly's in eighth place. It's the final game in Division B tonight. It's going to be Donkey Teeth in third versus the Dinner Barrel Darlings in fourth. They're both looking for their second win in this competition. Uh, whoever wins tonight, if they win, they're going to advance into first place. And even if it's a draw, somebody might advance into first place. First up, let's take a look at Donkey Teeth. They're coming in a TV of 1070. But uh, <laughs> so before this match started, uh, the number two war dancer here, Jack Marius Tactheratrix, he uh, he was about to level up. I thought for sure he was going to pick up strip ball, but it turns out he picked up sidestep. What do you think about that pickup? Sidestep's not a bad pickup. I was really, really expecting strip ball. <laughs> I was 100% expecting strip ball. We'll see if this works out for him here. 11 man roster here for Dead Fred. Again, he's coming in a TV of 1070. Two rerolls will be his big weakness tonight. One a pop carry, one fan factor. You can see uh, he's traded an alignment here for a catcher. He has uh, these catchers, they have sprint, they have uh, dodge, and then they have, of course, the catch skill here. Uh, man, what? This, this is why they die. Do you see this armor? This is nothing. Ridiculous. Somebody should tell those wood elves to put some clothes on. <laughs> but you can see the strength of this roster is they are so fast. Look at this. He has three players with a massive MA of eight. Everybody else is an MA of seven and an AG of four across the board. They're very, very brittle with that AV of seven, however, but their strength is pretty good too. A strength of three is pretty average, um, but man, when combined with these other stats, these are great, great players. You can see that reflected in their value. The catcher, of course, has a strength of two. If he ends up by his lonesome, you can bet that uh, Doug the Minotaur is going to pounce on Grunky Pete. Doug the Minotaur, he'll be coaching the Dinner Bell Darlings. They're coming in a TV of 1050. There's gonna be no petty cash in tonight's game. 
He's got a, a full roster here. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There it is. Uh, man, Dwarves also great right out of the box here. You can see he has Kevin Bacon, the number one runner. He has sure hands and he leveled up and picked up the block skill. That means every single player on this roster has the block skill. And you can bet that guard is not far behind for this Dwarven team. Gravy Crockett, the number three troll slayer. He has Dauntless and Frenzy, a devastating combination that Dauntless uh, not going to play a factor in this game, but can certainly play a factor against other teams. But Frenzy will absolutely be a factor. That's going to allow him to take a second block on a push. And he's going to try to leverage that to take out these fragile, fragile elves. The two blitzers come with the block skill, but so do the longbeards. Uh, man, what do you say about this roster, right? Like this, this yeah. is the classic matchup. This is Bashy versus Agile. Uh, I think the dinner bell darlings on offense, they're going to group together. They're going to cage up. They're going to take every single block they can take. They're going to try to open up a hole and, and slowly plod down the pitch. You can see they're not terribly fast. The runner is, but nobody else can really keep up with him. So it's going to be uh, difficult to keep him safe if he breaks free. Uh, whereas uh, this wood elf team, right? Donkey teeth. I think on offense, how do you stop them? They just flood elves downfield and they can score whatever they want. Um, but on defense, I I have to imagine that uh, Dead Fred is just going to keep these elves a step away from the offense. He's He doesn't want to give up any blocks whatsoever. He wants to hold the Dinner Bell Darlings to a blitz a turn. And if he can do that, he'll probably be successful at stopping the cage as well. He'll hold them to one space a turn. Um, do you see this going any other way? It's really going to be a war of positioning tonight, I believe. Yeah, I, I think I think I agree here. Uh, whoever whoever can leverage their strengths the best wins. I mean, you can say that about most games, but this is this is a classic matchup, right? This is I can be on the pitch all day long and I could beat you up versus I can't even be sneezed on, but boy, I can score whenever I want. So uh, Doug the Minotaur does have the three rerolls versus two uh, for Donkey Teeth. Uh, that could open up a, a strategic possibility to try to force Dead Fred to burn through those rerolls quickly. And with no rerolls, he now becomes a lot more scary, right? Now, uh, those dodges that he's inevitably going to take become very scary. Uh, so that could be an option as well. One fan factor for the Dinner Bell Darlings no cheerleaders, no coach assistants. Only 20k in the treasury. Nothing's going to happen in the. Uh, in the inducement phase, but I've been looking forward to this game, man. I love these sort of classic matchups. Uh, we'll see if the coaches are ready to go, and if they are, we'll get this game underway. We're a little bit early, so they might they might not be might not be ready quite yet. SP Beaver says Dauntless is almost useless in our division. Let's see, yeah. A bunch of elves, Amazons, Skaven. <laughs> it's Dauntless, Dauntless not doing a lot of work in Division B. <laughs> Maybe if a rat or shows up at some point, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's true. SP Beaver says Elf needs to take their blitz each turn and only give up one blitz a turn. Uh, I I agree with that. Doug the Minotaur says Skaven and Amazon would say otherwise. Otherwise to what? I don't know. I've, I haven't been paying attention. <laughs> Hank the Ranger makes a very good point. He says uh, Dauntless will be uh, useless until there are strength four war dancers. <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> flashbacks. <laughs> All right, we're about a minute early on this game. Uh, I don't. I don't think this game. Uh, on paper favors one team or the other they both are there are two teams with that are very strong in in polar opposite ways and so uh, i think you're right i think it comes down to how the coaches are going to position their players um if they can get an advantage one way or another whether that's player advantage whether that's positional advantage they can come out ahead these classic matchups are just pure uh condensed blood bowl right it's just about who who uses their kit better and that's why i think they're so fun there's definitely a chance for attrition to make a big big difference in this match 
That is for sure. We're about to get this game underway. El Numerino says, what level up did Dead Fred take? I guess we'll find out. He took uh, Sidestep. And it looks like the Dinnerbell Darlings are going to set up on defense. They probably, I don't know if they did, but if they won the coin toss, this is exactly what they want to do. This Elven team, so brittle. Uh, they don't really <laughs> often find themselves with enough uh, players on defense. So in the first half, that's when they're guaranteed 11. You can see Doug the Minotaur setting up in this uh, in this uh, pretty typical defensive formation. It's going to be very hard to get any blitzes on anybody important. Uh, we'll see if Donkey Keith tries to block down this line. He has to be a little bit careful here because all these dwarves have block skill. Yes, that's why he's keeping the word answers up there. Perhaps so. If there's five a man offensive, oh. five <laughs> man offensive line for Donkey Keith currently. SP Beaver says I would not risk the war dancer on the line. Um. Yeah, I mean, unless you, unless you're going after those blocks, I, I would agree. But he he can certainly be trying to go after the blocks. I think that's fine. Pfeiffer says the dwarfs look <laughs> looked friendlier in the second chaos cup. <laughs> they were chaos. Jeffrey going wide. Uh, with a lineman in either wide zone. Twenty-five seconds left to set up his formation here. He's got the catcher, uh, catcher kind of in a fullback position. Here's the kick. Final game of the week underway. And the, underway in the dinner bell, darlings. They're gonna get a blitz. Uh oh, short kick as well. Where's the runner? Where's the runner? Runner is well protected right in the middle there. <laughs> Kevin Bacon might get under this ball. We'll see. Blitz coming up on the number seven lineman, X-Wing at Aloysiousness. Two die blitz, skill blitz. This will work out with the pal. He's looking for the eight plus to get this, get this game going before turn Ooh. one. Didn't break armor. I'm sorry, he did break armor. We got a stun. GFI is to get to the ball. It's one mark on the ball now. Are we gonna see Kevin Bacon go for it? <laughs> Not if he keeps doing that. So spend a reroll before the game even begins. That's two players next to the ball. Now here's Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon on the three plus pickup. That worked out. Well done. Well done on the onside kick. The Dinnerbell Darlings said, you think we're on defense? Uh-uh. No, sir. And I don't even know if I got that in time. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but boy, man, that that was ah, oh, that was impressive. Well done. SP yeah, Beaver says those speedy little dwarves. Yep. <laughs> Turn one now for Donkey Teeth. He's got a surf there if that elf doesn't dodge too. Sorry, he's strength three. That was a that was a fifty fifty catch. Yeah, indeed he does. That Troll Slayer has Frenzy, so if that elf doesn't get out of the way, he's going to get surfed off the pitch. Clippy says it's way faster to score on defense. You don't have to run as far. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> number 10 lineman, triple parakeet shoes. <laughs> marks, marks the number 5 blitzer, General Tso.
Dead Fred. Uh, maybe dazed a little bit here. He's like, all right, here's my chance on offense. Uh-oh. Never mind. This is a bit of a pickle. He needs to get this ball back. He's not going to be on offense on the next turn. And, uh, man, it's, it's going to be hard to crack this Dwarven cage. Two-die blitz. Two-die leap blitz with the War Dancer. Ooh, spends the reroll. He's down to one. Failed the leap. Oh, no. Not a good start here. Four donkey teeth. Two die block of the line now for the Dinner Barrel Darlings. They get a block and they break armor again. This is their first official turn of the game. Another stun on the line. They're going to try to block this line down. They get another knockdown on Swordless Minion. Another broken armor roll. Going after the War Dancer. Got a push. It's a one die against number three. Unless he pulls in the assist. <laughs> Clive says, man, Donkey Teeth might not have a team next turn. <laughs> <laughs> Due to that failed leap, uh, we're almost certainly going to see this this uh, surf attempt over in the right wide zone. Let's see it. The crowd is ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> And if he says he can make the Surf a two-die with the other dwarf, he certainly can. He certainly can. Dinner Bell Darling's taking their time trying to figure out what to do next. They've got a two-die uh, near the ball carrier. They're going to take that first. They got the pal on JR Jr. Jr.'s Jr. Broken armor again. Another stun. Great stun. Think we'll see a foul this turn? Holy oh, moly. Answer. I I don't think we will. Well, maybe we will. Maybe we will. I think uh I think fouling a war dancer whenever you get the opportunity is I, I don't want to say usually the right idea, but often a good idea. I might say always. Timberbell Darling's siding the cage back up at center pitch. He didn't feel like he could make it safe over here in the left sideline. Is he going to try to get this corner here, or is he going to get the assist on the blitz? He's going to get the assist on the blitz. Let's go. Or on the uh, surf, I should say. Two die. He got the pals. Not going to surf, but he might take him off the pitch regardless, and he did! Ooh. Stumptavian Roboclick injured, and he is off the pitch, one man player advantage for the good setup to get the uh, the two die on both that block and the potential uh, surfing block there by Doug the Minotaur. And now yeah. another potential surf. <laughs> They're both burning through their rerolls already. One apiece, it's only turn two. Man, Donkey Teeth has decisions to make. They've got a couple of players out of position now. Uh, he's got a war dancer on the line. He's going to eat two dice unless he dodges away or leaps away or something. He has a downed war dancer that he absolutely wants to stand up, in my opinion. GG hey! Larry says he has a whole game to score. Just don't lose the ball. I I completely agree with you. Welcome to the stream. Catcher moves over to the right wide zone. Two die blocks. Set up the war dancer to get the assist. 
Sunday kid's going to get blocked down here. 10 plus breaks armor. That is a lot of armor to get through. got to end this turn by trying to save uh, triple parakeet shoes one way or another, whether that's by a block or by a couple of dodges, or even just one dodge, I guess. Tough dodge to make, too. Yeah. He's going to do the blitz instead. He's going to get a push here. He's going to try to set up for his own surf. We'll see if he follows up here. He pro if he if he wants to try to get the surf, he won't follow up, and then he'll finish moving here. Yeah, that's exactly what he's gonna do. <laughs> SP Beaver wanted to leap uphill blitz. Oh, he didn't set up for the surf. Instead, he's gonna dodge triple parakeet shoes out of the way. He's gonna get back in front of this cage. He's trying to regroup his defense here. I am very surprised he didn't go too deep on this defense. Uh, oh, wait. You know why I'm surprised? Because he's not supposed to be on defense. <laughs> oh, the failed War Dancer dodge. That's unfortunate. That War Dancer, he's prone. He's on the ground. He's a potential fouling target. Turn two, back to Ginger Bell Darlings. One re-roll remaining for both teams, and it's only turn two. I was not expecting a turnabout like that so quickly. Oh, man. <laughs> man. That blitz combined with that short kick, man, changed everything. Doug the Minotaur, considering his options here, you have two minutes to take your actions. You get to action every player once in Blood Bowl. If you have a full roster on the pitch, that's 11 players you can take an action with. Players can move, or they can block, uh, or they can take uh, a number of actions that are once per turn actions. You can hand off the ball, you can pass the ball, uh, you can foul a player, or you can blitz. Marks number three. He's going to set up the blitz here on Xmas Jackson Flaxen Waxen. Gets a push. <laughs> Follows up, and that's another mark on the War Dancer. Jack Marius Tech Theratrix. Paul's going to move one space forward. He's at the line of scrimmage. You might say, like, oh, man, he's been going nowhere. It's only turn two. He's just fine. <laughs> Troll Slayer gets into position behind the elven kek, uh, catcher, Grunky Pete. The Storven team, they, they want to take all the blocks they can. You can see him starting to pick off this defense. He's sequestered the War Dancer. The War Dancer could leap away, but uh, he sequestered these two players as well. And the War Dancer leap away? <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> <laughs> the War Dancer could attempt to leap away. Four prone elves. He's got to stand these elves up. He gets a mark on number nine. Takes the block before standing anyone else up. He must have plans for these elves. Maybe he wants to dodge them away. Good knockdown. Word answer still marked.
Apparently he has a, a one die here. One to three. I doubt he wants to take it. Gets the assist on the Troll Slayer. Two die block. Gets a push. He'll push him. Oh, I would have thought he'd push him over here and try to block him again. Fair enough. He wants to keep the long beard here marked. Oh, the catcher is strength too. That's why. Finally stands up this uh, war dancer in the uh, middle linebacker position, Hingle McCringleberry. Clifius, uh, thanks for coming out for the stream. Have a good night, man. Two die block. Gets the knockdown on number eight. Butch Casserole. Two more players left to action. One's free. If he's going to do something as number seven, he should do that first. He still hasn't taken the blitz yet, either. He has not. Here it is. Two die blitz. That's not going to work Ooh. out. Is he going to spend the reroll? He doesn't. I think that was wise. He's a little onto it. He just needed to hope. He needed to cross his fingers that he wasn't <laughs> taken off the pitch there. SB Weaver says, I feel that catcher started a shoving match he can't finish. Yeah, perhaps so. Hank the Ranger says, good hit by Grunky Pete. Grunky Pete. Good old Grunk. Where is he? Huh. He's the catcher. There he is. There he is. Grunky Pete. Turn three for the dinner bell darlings. Got blocks to take. The troll slayer gets behind this defensive line, marks that center war dancer. Under a minute to play in turn three. Doug the Minotaur trying to set up these blocks here. Two die block now on the number two War Dancer. Both standing result. War Dancer is very tough to take down. They have block and dodge. There's only one face on the die that will take them down. They also have the AG of four, and this particular one has sidestep. So even if he got knocked down, he could choose where he goes, and it doesn't have to be backwards. Bill's in the front of the cage. And now he has a solid four-point cage here. That'll be it. Turn four back to Donkey Teeth. Hank the Ranger asks, is the Troll Slayer AV8? He is indeed. Gets the assist on that Troll Slayer. Here's the two die block, gets a push. Hingle McCringleberry will probably follow up here. Yes, indeed. Another two die block and another push. Look at this. Gravy Crockett just will not go down. Two die block again, this time gets the pow. There's that pow he was looking for.
Good setup to get off that series of blocks by Dead Fred. SP Beaver calling for a foul. <laughs> Two die block on the left side of the pitch. That is going to be a both standing result due to the block skill. He's looking to get this war dancer out of out of harm's way. Even a push would have been preferable, I'm sure. Yeah, he, he wanted something. So anything other than that, well, anything other than that or a skull. Good dodge. Remember, these elves are 84, so those dodges are two plus when they're positive. Another two die block on the Sunday kid. It's going to be another push. Players left to action with 24 seconds left in turn four for Donkey T. Still hasn't used his blitz. Hank the Ranger wants a foul as well. Oh boy, are we going to see it? Yes, three assists on the foul. Let's go. Got a stun out of it, Stage did not kick five, off the pitch. Skull. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. I believe that would have been a KO otherwise. Yeah, you get knocked out on a uh, eight or a nine, typically. Dude, I block. It's not down on the three linemen. When you roll on the injury table, when you break armor, you roll on the injury table. You roll 2d6 again. On a 2 to 7, you're stunned. On an 8 or a 9, you're knocked out. And on a 10 through 12, it's what's called a casualty. You will roll one more time with a d68. It's just a d6 and a d8. And you will, you will see what sort of injury you take. Um, but... That thick skull treats the eight on the knocked out as a stun instead. Double skulls on this blitz. A little surprised he uh, re-rolled that. Apparently really wanted to take this catcher out of the game. Got a stun. Dinnerbell Darlings with no re-rolls remaining for the half. minute 10 seconds left in the first quarter sp beaver says i really do not want to see that troll slayer next week well tough <laughs> <laughs> you know what you got into <laughs> one of the many 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 things i like about blood goal is uh how things change not just with coaches and teams and races but over the course of the season Later on in the season, we'll start to see the TD differentials uh, widen and inducements being brought in, wizards and halfling master chefs. It's going to be so good, man. It's going to be so good. <laughs> it's going to be so scary once this team gets some guard. Oh, indeed. This Dwarven team, yeah. he's You know he's that's going to be his first pickup with his level ups. Second quarter begins here for Donkey Teeth. They were supposed to be on offense, but the ball was snaked from them on the onside kick. They really, really want to score here <laughs> if they can at all help it. Elmi Bruno says, Doug, the Minotaur is keeping the Blitzers in the back of the cage in case he needs their extra movement. Two die block on the war dancer gets the push. I'm sorry, by the war dancer gets the push. <laughs> it's gonna follow up here and get another two die block. It looks like a butch casserole. 
here it comes. Dude, I blocked another push. Just shoving these stout oh, little pushy. dwarves around. Do you think we'll see another foul attempt on the Troll Slayer? I certainly hope so. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Oh my, I didn't even realize Donkey Teeth has the plus two fame advantage and the kickoff event went that way. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Thirty nine seconds left for Donkey Teeth here trying to figure out what to do. Trying to figure out how to stop this cage. They can do it. Um, he might try to dodge one or both of these players out. Hey! Looks like he might be giving up the foul on the Troll Slayer. Takes a mark on the front right corner of the cage with the number 10 lineman. Here's that blitz. Two die blitz gets a push. Probably going to push him straight back here. Oh no, he's going to push him into this, this little gaggle of elves. Good to see him applying some pressure. He is. He is indeed. Yeah, there's that Dodge on the on the uh, war dancer on the left side of the pitch to get the assist. Two die block on the Sunday kid doesn't break armor, but that's fine. When you knock down a, a dwarf, that's a pretty good knockdown. Even if you can't take them off the pitch, it costs three MA to stand back up. That reduces them to one MA. Often they don't care; they'll just stand back up and take the mark because they want to get the block later on. Um, but it allows you to control the pitch if you can knock down those dwarves and then control uh, their movement options. <laughs> the ranger asks, is a grouping of elves called a gaggle? Yes, it is officially called a gaggle in Elvish. <laughs> Two die blitz on that uh, that aggressive lineman, number five, Swordless Mime Town. He's going to get knocked down here. And it'll be a chain push. Breaks armor, gets a stun. Push the big ragu out to safety. And he'll be able to get the two die on number four here. Dinnerbell darlings need to start thinking about moving the ball down pitch. I was just about to say the same thing. Already turn five and they just now <laughs> crossed the line. Yeah, they are they, uh... not very speedy. They are not. SP Beaver, thank you so much for the gift sub. I really appreciate it. Very kind. Thank you. You're, you're a gift sub master. <laughs> Gets a stun on JR Junior Juniors Junior. Yes, thank you very much. It's very nice. That name never fails to make me laugh. <laughs> It's 13 spaces from the line of scrimmage to the end zone. If he wants to stay caged up, he's probably only going to be moving four spaces a turn. And he only has four turns remaining. Two die block over on the left side of the pitch. Breaks armor again. He's really looking to get player advantage here. It's just not working out. You think it's Xmas or Zimus? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Finally crosses the line of scrimmage here. He'll get across the line to, uh, to Donkey Teeth's four yard line. Troll Slayer stands up. 
just in the nick of time. Turn six for Donkey Keith. <laughs> really Three maxed turns. out that timer. He did. Three turns remaining for Donkey Keith. Do you think Dead Fred even thought he would get this far in the first drive? <laughs> Ooh. Hank the Ranger asks, where did the Wood Elves get their armor for this game? It's obviously been upgraded somehow. They learned. They learned from last season. That's a good point. SB Beaver says the ball's almost where it started. Almost there. Crucially, there are no rerolls left for the Dinner Bell Darlings. One left for Donkey Teeth. Two die block coming up on Wyatt Burp. Gets a push. Two die block, man. This dog, this uh, Wood Elf team, they're they're fighting back. They're taking all their blocks. SP is just, just put, putting the ball carrier on the outside can be dangerous for dwarves. They can get locked down much easier. Um, that's true. Uh, I would typically agree. Um, he's in pretty good shape here, though. He he can bust through this. Uh, no problem, especially if you can get the marks over here. Ed Fred's doing a really good job of slowing him down this this whole time. He is. He's 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 playing deftly. Let's we'll see what he wants to do with this final war dancer here. Dodge Blitz. Two die Blitz. Gets the knockdown on Sunday Kid. Looking for that 10 plus. Got the 10 plus. Got the injury. Ooh. Well done. Oppo gets spent. Sunday oh. Kid's going to stay in this game. That flying kick to the face ended up with a pinched nerve. That's a that's a one man player advantage for these wood elves. Dare I say it? Might not be for long. Oh no, it's ten v ten on the pitch. I dare not say it because <laughs> it's wrong. <laughs> Dinner Bell Darlings with just three turns remaining. SP Beaver uh, looks like he cheered for the offense. I don't remember, but thank you for the bits. <laughs> looks like he cheered for the dead presidents. Hey, great, thanks. Hear about George's face, though. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Dinner Bell Darlings, uh, Doug the Minotaur, uh, almost certainly thinking about how he's uh, going to try to score. He can open up a lane here if he wants, but then it's about how do I keep the lane open? How do I keep this ball moving? Marks the war dancer. Marks the number seven lineman. X wing at Aloysiousness. 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 Takes the one die blitz. Works out due to the block skill. Gets a great stun out of it, too. <laughs> Hank the Ranger says, I think he was cheering for the defense, but technically the elves are on offense. But should. 
are on defense, but should have been on offense. It's confusing. It's very confusing. <laughs> what must be def uh, deflating here for Dead Fred is that uh, even if he stops the score, he's going to have to do it all over again next half. Is he going to GFI? He is. Oh, wait, that's the runner. He doesn't need to. Ball is now on Donkey Teeth's 14 yard line. He's in scoring position. Turn seven for Donkey Teeth. Two turns left to try to make something happen. Their whole defense is behind this Dwarven team. If he has any hope of stopping it, it's going to either be the War Dancer going after the ball carrier or approximately 473 dodges. Might be a little tough with the block skill on that runner. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good pickup. Block's almost always a good pickup. In fact, I can't really think of a, of a time when it, it wouldn't be a good pickup. Doesn't even need to be uphill. He can make it a one die. Well, not if you're going to fail that dodge. Spends his final re-roll. Oh, man. I thought he was going to mark number 14 after the ball carrier. Failed the second dodge. That's going to be a turnover. And Not a, a whole lot. That's is a KO. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and also a turnover. Uh, I think we're going to see a score here. I don't think the Dinnerbell Darlings want to waste time without any rerolls. Yeah, one to zero. Dinnerbell Darlings take the lead on defense. On offense defense. <laughs> on dolphins. On dwarfence. This touchdown is brought to you by Delicious Grog. Try some today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ducky Heath. Knockout player doesn't come back on the pitch, but he's going to get another opportunity in the second half. All right. All right. Time for some snow. <laughs> <laughs> or sweltering heat, says Hank the Ranger. Yeah, that, that'd be fine. A riot. Yeah. Hank the Ranger says, now we need a riot. Man. Donkey Teeth would love to see a riot. Dinnerbell Darling saving all of their players, putting them back by the end zone. Donkey Teeth are going to take all the blocks on the line. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're trying for a one turn. Indeed, they're not going to try to one turn this, but, uh, but a riot would, would be great for them anyway. Nope, it, the weather's just going to... The breeze is going to pick up slightly. Oh, what a kick! Wow! What a kick by Doug the Minotaur. Even if there was hope. <laughs> Not with that kick. Three blocks to take on the line. We'll see if he feels like fouling too. I don't know. I feel like that's, that's risky. I mean, it is risky. And you're down two players yourself. First block gets a push. Second block is going to get a knockdown here on the right side of the line. It's Powell and Paul Funyon. Final two die coming up. This against Wyatt Burp. Number 11 Longbeard. He wouldn't dare. Gets a push on the three die. And that'll be it. He'll pick this ball One up and get some block. SPP. 
Oh, he does have another block. You're absolutely right. And he got the pal this time. That'll be it. <laughs> Good call on that <laughs> final block. Some SVP to pick up here. He's going to try to level up Grunky Pete. He could still fell. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that's happening. One, two, one, two. This looks like a long pass. It might be a, it might be a short pass. One, two, one, two. Oh, I'm going to say it's a short pass. I don't know. It's a tough call. GFI, as it looks like it was indeed a long pass, he's going to make this a short pass. Well, he's not going to make this any pass. He's going to fumble it, and that'll be the turn for Donkey Teeth. Dinnerbell Darlings might just skip it. Yeah, might just skip this turn. That's it. One to zero. Dinnerbell Darlings not only in the lead, but they're going to be on offense to start the second half. What a half. What a half. What a start to that half. Man. Donkey Teeth uh, did a did a very commendable job of uh, trying to stop this offense. Couldn't do it in the end. Uh, uh, Doug the Minotaur was just able to, to pick off these players and get in front of them. And once that happens, it's very hard to, to reset. <laughs> Hank the Ranger says it seems like the Wood Elf armor upgrade is having a negative impact on their agility. <laughs> so a one-man player advantage for the Dinnerbell Darlings currently. Ah, yes, yeah, so you can see Donkey Teeth are setting up in that, uh, that traditional elvish defense here. I think that's a good call. Looks like he has his, his line strong on the right side. We'll see if he shifts it to center or not. The advantage of this defense here is you can see he's covering all of all of this space. And nobody can get through it, even if they blitz, except for this this corner right here. But you're up against a very slow team, so uh, this isn't such a big deal. In fact, he could shift one space over if he wanted to. And he can give up a wider area on the left wide zone. And if he can go the uh, offense into committing to that, he can sort of smoosh his defense down, collapse on the deep, on the offense, try to stop them in the tracks. Now we just need a sh <laughs> now we just need a shallow kick and a blitz, and uh, we can have everything <laughs> all matched up. <laughs> an eye for an eye. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted you. Oh no, that's all right. Uh, Donkey Teeth. Uh, so if they're gonna, if they're gonna play the keep away game, the problem is they're on defense and they find themselves behind. So they're gonna have to get at this ball at some point. When they do, will be. Uh, oh, Donkey Teeth gets an extra reroll. They love that, and a great kick to start this half as well. When they do is gonna be a, a key strategic decision. Uh, you know those those ward ant dancers can leap blitz that'll be a way to way to do it for sure but if you're going in on a four point cage like that uh you could probably strip the ball away but what happens to the ball at that point right now that war dancer is in big big trouble so you want to crack that cage first somehow maybe get a player or two down a corner or a side of that cage and then you can go in for the leap blitz um and then hopefully get the ball out on the same turn that deep kick might have just been as good as a shallow one for the Wood Elves. Yeah, we'll see if he can capitalize on this. Really split the team up. Dwarves, uh, dwarves do not like to be split up. Lots of teams, most teams maybe don't want to, but Dwarves in particular, once they start to level up and get that guard, they really must stay together. One die block gets them on the corner here. El Nibirino makes a good point on that defensive setup. Can't set up within two of the sideline due to the frenzy skill of the Troll Slayer. Good mindfulness by Dead Fred. Final, well, would have been the final block on the line, but another one coming up. Gets another push, and that'll be the final block on the line. JR Jr.'s Jr. 
Jr. Jr. Jr.'s Jr. Stay on his feet unless he gets good stand. I can't imagine he will. Not using the blitz. Going for the ball pickup. Kevin Bacon, known for his ball handling skills. Turn nine for Donkey Teeth now. Boy, you need to get on the board. Do you just do you just start motoring? If Dead Fred wants to, he could try to split this Dwarven team in two. Looks like he wants to. Yeah, attacking up deep might be the best best tactic against this. This Dwarven team is not only slow, but they don't really have a passing game. Um, could they pass? Sure. But... Uh, it's rather risky, um, almost not going to happen at all if they don't have a reroll on deck. But even if you catch the ball down, what are you going to do? You can't run. You're a dwarf. You can't go. You can't run. To imagine whatever blitz is coming up it's going to come up uh it's going to be jack marius attack theratrix who's going to do it maybe a number five moves jr jr jr's jr over across the line of scrimmage in the white and the right wide zone In the backfield. Here's the blitz. And that's exactly the blitz it's going to take. What a weird animation that was. Two die blitz gets a push. Decides to push him away. He didn't want any of his players marked. No movement left with the war dancer unless he uh, GFIs. Grunky Peep moves downfield. Good stand-up dodge by Exmus Jackson Flaxen Waxen. He's gonna stay in front of this dwarven line. I might have tied up one of them. But uh, I also understand the risk of, <laughs> of eating a block, even a one die block, when it's skilled and you're not. And you have an AV of seven. Yeah. I probably would have been tempted to uh base all of them and <laughs> probably would have paid for it. <laughs> hey. Well, it's going to advance the Dinabout Darling's own 10 yard line. And they're going to cage up. There it is. They're going to have an opportunity to reset their, their line as well. This could, this, could harm, uh, this could harm Donkey Teeth pretty significantly. We'll see. Two die blitz on the catcher gets the pow. He's looking for that eight. He got it. Gets a stun. Hard to crack a dwarven cage. Hundred minute play in turn ten for Dinnerbell Darlings. That's going to be it. Back to Donkey Teeth now. 
think we'll see the leap blitz into the cage? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. You'd want to mark. You want to mark these two. So that'd be a dodge by number eight. I mean, maybe. <laughs> Got to do something. Doesn't necessarily have to do it now. It's very early in the half. I think one GFI could get Xmas Jackson Flax and Waxen onto the near side of the cage. Oh no, the failed dodge. The two plus dodge failed. Spends the reroll. He doesn't have a reroll left for the turn. This might affect what actions he decides to take. Gets the assist on number 12, Soy Rogers. He's going to be taking a two die block. Got the pal there. Well done. Oh, yeah. Hank Ranger says the, the leap blitz would be easier to do on the right side. There's no dodge here with X Wing at Aliciousness. Two die block with. Jack Marius Tech Theratrix gets the knockdown. Good dodge on the left side of the line. Two die block on the, with the assist. General Custard, he'll be taken taken to the ground here. He's going to go after the cage for uh, the corner of the cage. First. I think that's a fine decision. I was afraid he was going to try to leap blitz. Wow, Ooh. got an injury on Queso Bill. Well done. I think that's tied up on the pitch, right? 10 v 10 now on the pitch. Yeah, this is what we were talking about earlier. This puts him in better position. If he If he can keep this situation this puts him in better position to try to strip ball blitz he really, he really doesn't want to... strip ball <laughs> oh he doesn't he doesn't have strip ball he got sidestep man. man i keep i just assume dancers have strip ball <laughs> <laughs> oh oh no <laughs> all right fair enough I see War Dancer, I think Strip Ball. <laughs> SB Beaver says, we really want to see Miss next game. Do we really want to? Do we? How do you feel about those Dwarven Blitzers? Do you think the one extra movement is worth the loss of tackle? Um. Yes, I, I do. I mean, they're just so slow. El Marino makes a good point. With strip ball matter here, the runner has sure hands. He does. That does negate uh, strip ball. That's a good point. <laughs> Sure hands gives you a free reroll when you pick up the ball and negates strip ball. When there are wood elves in play, you can bet that every team that can will inevitably try to pick up sure hands in somebody. Two die blitz works out to the block skill. Took down Ozemataz Buckshank, number eight lineman. Ellie Marina says, is Russell worth it even being somewhat redundant with block on the War Dancer? I, I wouldn't take Russell on the War Dancer. I'd, I'd absolutely put Russell on 
on a lineman though. I don't think the word answer needs it. Like, yeah, you're a blotter. Uh, you're already fairly safe, and I think there's better skills you could be picking up with your level ups on the word answer. I think that might have been a mistake where he put that cage. Oh? Well, he's got someone in there already, and... This is negating these three guys here. Every single corner of this cage marked right now by Donkey Teeth. <laughs> it would be a tough leap blitz, but it is possible. We're going to see a blitz on the corner of the cage. And oh no, we are going to see the leap blitz. Here it is. He's got the one die leap blitz. He gets a push. Is he going to re-roll it? He decides not. To, not, to not push his luck. He's going to get the chain push here. Oh, I hope that war dancer lives. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already making invitations to his funeral. <laughs> <laughs> like party invitations? <laughs> Maybe. You are you are cordially invited to, <laughs> to the funeral of Hengel McCringleberry. Two die block coming up on Paul Funyan. Woo, what a mess. Gets a foot or gets a pal here. Now he has a two die on General Custer. Hey. And Soy Rogers. Got the pow on General Custer as well. The follow up here. He breaks armor, gets a stun. That might be a great stun. We'll see. Two die way over on the right side of the line of scrimmage. Another pal here against Soy Rogers. This is going to free up number number nine, DeGluster Hard Duncan Chubb. Classic Elvin name. And there's the two die on Butch Casserole. Well done by Donkey Teeth here. They're going to get a push. That's fine. I don't know if he's going to follow up on it, though. No, he's going to stay put. He's going to keep his positioning, keep these tackle zones. That'll be it. Turn 12 now for the Dinner Bell Darlings. Great turn for Dead Fred. It's going to be tough to unravel this knot. I think you might just try to dodge away. I don't know, maybe. See if that catcher stays in. Punch away. <laughs> <laughs> Punching away is pretty good. It's got the word answer to take care of. I think the ranger says dodge the runner. <laughs> El Numerino says dwarves dodge with their extra fist. It's hidden under their beards. Too true. Takes the one dive lock of the Sunday Kid, spends a reroll, gets a push. By the Sunday Kid, rather. Wow. wow. Got the chain push there, and the war dancer decided to sidestep up on this would be cage. Two die block now on uh, Hingle McCringleberry. This will be a dodge push. 
doesn't follow up, and I don't know if we'll see the, the second block. I'm sure we will. Although it is just a one die. It is a one die block. Why is that a two die block? Oh, because he's blocking this guy. Great. He takes the blitz on X Wing at Aliciousness. Moves along here forward. He's going to try to reset this cage. We're going to see the ball carrier take a step back here on turn number 12. That might be it. I I'd take this block here. He decided not to. Fair enough. Turn 12, final turn of the third quarter. Donkey Teeth desperately trying to get this ball back in the second half of the game. says we could see a repeat of last turn. Marking the left side of the cage. With cage one push, once again marked. With one push, we could maybe see a two die on the ball there. We could. play for Donkey Teeth, trying to figure out what action order they need to take here. Both coaches doing a good job of holding on to their team rerolls this half. Two die block coming up on Butch Casserole. Word answer leap fail. That leap is a two thirds chance. Spends a reroll. Lands on his feet. Blitz Leap gets a push. Doesn't have the reroll to get the knockdown. Keeping some good uh, pressure on that <laughs> ball carrier. He's doing a great job here. He was put on the back foot right out of the gate in this game, and he's uh, doing a fantastic job. He's been on defense the entire game. Ten seconds left for Donkey Teeth. They have a number of players left to action. Good dodge. A pitch. That's it. Fourth and final quarter begins here. Dinner Bell Darlings, they're up 1-0. They have the ball. Ball under immense pressure by the Donkey Teeth defense. Two die block on Hingle McCringleberry. They're going to get a dodge push out of this. Nope, uh, they're going to get really. a knockdown due to the tackle skill. <laughs> oh, that tackle. <laughs> that tackle. I will forget about it each and every time. <gasps> One die blitz gets the push on. De Gluster Hard Dunkin Chud. <laughs> Two die block works out to the block skill, knocks down Azam Vitaz Buckshank, the number eight lineman. Man, these Wood Elves are just not leaving the pitch. Doug the Minotaur must be very frustrated with these blocks at this point. Ooh. One that die, I had to re-roll roll it. Had a decent stun there against Triple Parakeet Shoes. Yeah. 
And for Ranger says, <laughs> the what else staying on the pitch? That's sorcery. <laughs> Both standing result on the word answer. It has to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the word answer finally goes down. He's going to get the sidestep, but an eight plus will break armor. And the runner is still marked no matter where he goes now. Gets a stun. Good stun on the number two war dancer. It's got a... No, that might be it. Yeah, turn 13 for Donkey Teeth now. Ah, oh, what a boxing match this is. That stun was absolutely crucial. Doug the Minotaur just needs to hold on to the ball. Dead Fred trying everything in his power to get this ball back. Dead Fred in the unfortunate position where he has not been allowed to be on offense at all the whole game. He'd love a wizard right about now. <laughs> oh man, he he would kill for a wizard. Problem is, the wizard already cast the spell to keep keep his armor strong. <laughs> Wizard's done for the day. Under a minute to go for Donkey Teeth. Really needs to consider what he wants to do. Only has one reroll left for the entire game. Thank the Rangers that this has been a terrible game for the ground. It's all dwarves. Oh no, a failed dodge Whoa. by the War Dancer. Two plus dodge. Spends the reroll. Here's the Blitz. Why here? Oh, because he wants to leap in. He's going to try it again. Uphill Blitz. It's going to be a both standing result. At least there's no single skull. It's very true. Does he want to try this again? He does. One die gets the foul on oh. Kevin Bacon. Where's the ball scatter? Breaks armor as well. What a great stun. Wow. Wow, and the boss. Has no rerolls left, but I imagine he's going to try to dodge regardless. I know I'd try the pickup. <laughs> well, failed the dodge. Failed the dodge. Roll to one. That's a turnover. Kevin Bacon has an AG of three, but the big Ragu only has an AG of two. Turn 14 for the Dinnerbell Darlings. Two die block back at the line of scrimmage is going to get the knockdown on number eight. Man, what a game. What a game this has been. I am enthralled. S'mores Dragon says, so close yet so far. Indeed. If Dead Fred can tie this ball game up. It, he would absolutely deserve it. He's fought so hard for this. But Doug the Minotaur, an excellent coach in his own right. He is he's just not relenting. I say it like he should. <laughs> Why won't you give him the ball? <laughs> Bill, every time you mention a turnover, I want a pastry. <laughs> Yeah, these final few turns, I think both coaches are going to end up using most of the time on the clock here as they consider the decisions in their action orders. Dinnerbell Darlings have one reroll left. They don't want to waste it if they don't have to. And Donkey Teeth has none, so action order is going to be critical. Gets the mark to get the two die on, uh, on number seven, X-Wing at uh, Aliciousness. 
Makes it a blitz, gets the knockdown. Looks like he may be going after him. Gets a KO, well done. I believe that gives them a one-man player advantage. Good ball pickup, balls back in the position of the Dinnerbell Darlings. He still has some movement left. He does, and he GFIs Whew. twice to protect the ball carrier. Wow. <laughs> that was risky. Wow. Still not super safe, but... Spent his final reroll here on the one die block. Only got a push out of it. <laughs> Yeah, El Bruno says that AG3 is the other reason to take the blitzer of the Longbeard. I mean, the difference between AG3 and AG2 is pretty big. Oh, it's huge. Yeah, that's a really good point. Two die block on the War Dancer. It's going to be a dodge push. Frenzy follow up. Another two die on the War Dancer. Another dodge oh. push. And now he's going to be <laughs> real close to that ball. Takes another one die block. This will work out through the block skill. And that'll be the turn. Doug the Minotaur needs to hold the ball for two turns. Turn 14 for Donkey Teeth. I imagine they'll they'll try this again. They'll try the splits again. Considering his options. Gets a mark on the Sunday kid and the ball carrier. Does that mean he's going to come in from this side? I don't know if I'd leap blitz with the war dancer. I, I think it's better to take the dodge here and make it a one die. Because it's one die either way. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> but he should be he should stand up his players before he does that. It's just gonna depend on what he wants to do with the players. That's the problem without having a reroll. Went for the leap blitz. Here we go. Uphill blitz instead of the one die. It's going to be a push result. Sweet Bunny says there's no tackle on the wood answer. It's not going to get up this. Not going to get this ball this turn. But they don't have to. They just need to get it before the game's over. Thank goodness for that free dodge. <laughs> relentless defensive pressure. Both both coaches being absolutely relentless. They have to be. Turn 15 for the Dinner Bell Darlings. Can they hold on to this ball for two turns? No rerolls left for either team. I, I'm literally, I'm literally on the edge of my seat. <laughs> I should sit back. I should be more comfortable. I should sit back. <laughs> Get paid for the whole seat. 
<laughs> you only need the edge. <laughs> Dinner bell, darlings. With one minute, six seconds left in their turn. What do you think the game plan is here? He just he wants to try to try to cage this ball back up if he can. I feel like just trying to push away the the top four dancer and then maybe blitzing the bottom one would be the wisest way to go, but. Gonna mark the word answer. I think that might be in the opposite direction. Maybe he's playing some D here. Two die block on Hingle McCringleberry. He's gonna break armor. And he gets a KO. Well done. Well done. Took one of the two ward answers off the pitch. That is a huge get here in turn 15. That's a two-man player advantage for the Dinner Bell Darlings. Now, the second war dancer is going to have to eat a bunch of blocks. Oh, he's got sidestep. Maybe not. Who took that? This guy? Oh, he's going to take another block here. I wonder why he, he sidestep. Stay here. up. <laughs> if he can stay up, he's still in, in good shape. Well, he's not going to. Sidestep away from the ball. He's going to get knocked down here. We'll see if he can stay on the pitch. Oh, he got stunned. That is a great, great stun for the Dinner Bell Darlings. This war dancer's out till turn 16. He's going to lose 3 MA in the process. Two guy block gets a push on JR Jr. Jr.'s Jr. back toward the line of scrimmage. That might be it for the Dinner Bell Darlings. Turn 15 for Donkey Teeth. Both war dancers are out for this turn. Hank <laughs> the Ranger says no one has died yet, so I consider this a disappointing Blood Bowl game. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no permanent injuries? Nothing. I'm these shocked. elves. This something's shocked. up with these elves. They they made a deal with somebody with a with an armorer. Something. Hey, the Ranger says Donkey Teeth is gonna need some serious elven BS to pull out a tie. Uh, yeah, yeah, they are. They're, they're out both their war dancers. Um, it's they're gonna have to put their hands in the fade of Nuffle here to try to get this ball back. Hands in the fate of Nuffle? They're gonna have to put their fate in the hands of Nuffle. That's really maybe that's why it never works out for me. I get it backwards. Hank Ridge says, does Dead Fred have an apothecary remaining? I think he does. Yeah. Good dodge by the catcher, Grunky Pete. He is he is marked by two players. He says, I don't care. I'm here to play Blood Bowl. <laughs> S'mores Dragon, yes. They'll have to put their feet in the mouth of Nuffle if they want to pull out the draw. <laughs> I think we'll see a blitz this turn. He's got to do something. On the ball. He's got to do something. That failed. Failed the two plus dodge. He's probably uh, cursing at that. <laughs> <laughs> turn 16 for the Dinner Bell Darlings. Two die block coming up on triple parakeet shoes. Hank the Ranger says, I might have used the oppo on the ward answer to keep him on the pitch. Uh, I, I'm i 98% sure I would have done the same. Probably wanted to make sure that one of those ward dancers didn't totally die. That's true. 
That's that's the two percent. In my head, I go, oh, it's two turns. What could happen? <laughs> Dude, I have Blitz on Triple Parakeet. She's going to get the pal here. All he really needs to do is move forward here, and he's won this game, I think. Well, no, that's not true. Probably wants to stay secure instead, yeah. I was like, everybody's down. Oh, they're... <laughs> They're elves, they can move a lot. There's that cage, safe and secure. Two die block coming up on number nine. Gets a pal again. Breaks yeah, armor breaks again. Armor. Gets a stun, that player's out for the rest of the game. Two die coming up on number four. Two die on number three as well. Good action order here by Doug Benitar to get those two die blocks. And that'll work out with the uh, double defender stumbles. That frees up both casserole as well. He'll just take take a mark on someone. Yeah, takes it on the ward answer. Doggy no Teeth foul? has. <laughs> 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 if Doggy Teeth has any hope of winning, of tying this game. They've just got to go after the ball carrier here, but that's risky. He might not want to risk his players just for a draw. He might just throw in the towel here and take take whatever blitz he can. If he's planning on scoring, he's got to get somebody in the end zone first. Then you'd have to get two two players at least around here. One to make the blitz, one to make the pick up and pass. And currently Grunky Peep is the only one not taking a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Grunky Peep. He's the fearless catcher. One minute, four seconds left in this ball game. There's the dodge. He's taking a mark. He, uh, he's running out of players. Although I'm not sure he's going to try to try to score. SP Beaver says if any team could pull it off, it would be the Elves. Fail the dodge. That's the game. 1-0. The Dinner Bell Darlings are going to take this one. What a game. What a game this was. Wow. That was a great game. Dinner Bell Darlings, 1-0, 21 armor breaks. Look at that ball possession. Look look at the ball possession here. You, <laughs> you rarely ever see this. I'm, I'm taking a picture of this. I've never seen 0% before. Donkey Teeth was just incapable of picking up the ball. Dinner Bell Darlings did a fantastic job of holding on this ball, scoring on defense in the first half. The only touchdown we had was a defensive touchdown, but I got to say, Donkey Teeth, man, their defense was insane. I think even though they lost this one one to zero, they they put on they put on one show, man. They they really did a great job of shifting their defense from keep away to aggression, and uh, and uh, they should really be proud of that. SPP for this matchup. It's going to be 10 for the Dinner Bell Darlings, 9 for Donkey Teeth. Not a whole lot of SPP considering uh, just how much action happened in this game, but that's fine. Um, and that's going to do it for... Yeah, Doug the Minister says, what a nail biter sweating over here. That was... Whew! <laughs> how many failed dodges? El Nubrino wants to see how many failed dodges there were. That's fine. Let's see. 70% uh, <laughs> success rate on the dodge for Donkey Teeth. That's not great. Not great. Dinner Bell Darlings had a 72%. Uh, man. <laughs> but that's going to do when... it for, uh, for week two. <laughs> week uh, three will start tomorrow. And uh, when those games get scheduled, you'll be able to check them out and get alerted to their schedules on our website at www.mammal.com here on uh, on Twitch or on our social media pages at on, on Twitter, Mastodon, and Facebook. You can listen to our podcast, Mammal Talk, and watch previous games on our youtube channel artificial bunny thank you so much for joining me tonight thanks for having me what a fun game this was
really good pair of games uh, today. I, I thought they were both uh, a blast to play and watch. Can't wait for more Blood Bowl. There's still plenty of Blood Bowl left in the Chaos Cup and plenty, plenty more left in the season. Play Blood Bowl. Where else can Wood Elves leap in, into a cage of dwarves and try to beat them up or, or, or do a flying kick to the face? Uh, what, a, what a fun game this is. Uh, or else can dwarves out dodge the elves? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you make a great point. Where else? Where else can dwarves out dodge? Out dodge the elves? Those jerk faces. <laughs> you can play Blood Bowl via Blood Bowl Two on Steam, soon to be Blood Bowl Three, and in tabletop form at your friendly local game store. Until next game. Enjoy your evening and take care, everybody. <laughs>